Hello everyone. I recently created this field value geometry node. This can be used to display field values at face, edge or point domain. In this particular example, I am displaying the position, the index and an index switch value in face domain. And I can simply display the same set of values on point domain as well as the edge domain. For example, this particular edge indexed 20 has value 20.69 associated with it and I change it here. This value gets changed. This works with meshes as well as curves. For example, the same information is displayed on this curve as well. The red numbers are the indices of the control points. The green numbers are the index switch values and the blue numbers are actually the positions of the control points. And since this is geometry node, this will of course change dynamically when the value changes. Let's see how we can use this node in a new blend file. I'll open a new instance of Blender. After you download the file in a particular folder, you need to go to Edit Preferences and in File Paths under Asset Libraries, you need to configure the folder where you downloaded the file as an asset library folder. For example, here I have already included this Blender assets, which contains that file. Then now if I switch to geometry nodes and open an asset browser in the Blender assets, I'll see this particular node group. Let me create a new geometry node modifier for this object. And now I can drag this particular node group here. And this will start showing the field values associated with this particular domain. Currently, we are just displaying a single value at all vertices. But if I simply change this to, let's say, index, you see that the values displayed are the indices of these vertex. We can control the number of digits before and after the decimal point. Let me set the precision to zero because the index is an integer. And I can replace this with a Q. Let's copy the modifier onto the cube also. And we can see the vertex indices of the cube vertex here. If I change this from point to face, you can see that basically the indices are of the faces of the cube. I can of course scale this up. I can either display a float or a vector. Vector typically has three values x, y, and z. So let's display the position in the vector field and let's increase the precision two digits. So now we can see the position of each face of the cube. And if I change this to edge, we see the position of the edge of this cube. And I can also change this to point. And if I change the position of a particular vertex, we see that the position changes dynamically. As we saw earlier, the, the nodes can be combined to display different values at the same position or even at different domains. And since it's a geometry node, it will reflect the changes dynamically. Let's quickly see all the options here. The first option is of course the geometry. The second one indicates whether you want to display a float value or a vector value. If float is selected, the value from this socket will be displayed. And if you select vector, the value from this socket will be displayed. You can connect the field values to these sockets. Then the digits before is the number of digits that are there before the decimal point. If the value exceeds this number of digits, you get an overflow error. So let's see how this works. I'll just add an index switch. And let's change this to float. So basically this index switch will have set of values for different indices. If we connect the index to the first socket, let's have another node that will display the index. 
this is our index and this is the index switch value and here we can see that basically at zero we have zero value let's change the value at one and you see that value is getting reflected here and similarly we can have more such values as we saw earlier if the number of digits don't support this particular value then we get an overflow error which is indicated by hyphen sign so this basically means that the digits counts that we have configured don't support this particular value so i can either increase the digits or decrease this value this of course also displays negative values precision determines how many digits there will be after the decimal point then this drop down will allow you to define the domain point face or the edge you can set the alignment of the text like center right aligned or left aligned then by checking this particular option align to global we can always align the displayed values to global z axis so if let's say i have this particular setup where the object is rotated and if i always want the values to be aligned to global z i can check this value if i don't check this value then the text will be aligned to the local z axis the scale of course determines the size of the text that is displayed then digit separation is basically the space between the digits i can increase or decrease that space i can increase or decrease the separation between elements for example if i am displaying position then this will allow me to change the separation between the elements the individual elements of the vector x y and z offset will let me change the position along x y and z of the text the segment width factor is basically the width of the segment i can increase or decrease this segment width make it thinner or thicker segment separation factor is the separation between the segments of the digits i can increase or decrease this segment separation tip sharpness is basically the sharpness of the tip within the segment zero makes it totally flat one is the typical value that you see in seven segment displays and you can set any other value to make the appearance to your liking finally checking this leading zero will also show the zero values depending on the number of digits for all the values and of course you can set the material of the node i hope you find this node useful if you have any suggestions or questions please leave a comment on this video thank you very much